the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, officially branded as CBC Radio Canada, is a Canadian crown corporation that serves as the national public radio and television broadcaster. The English and French language services units of the corporation are commonly known as CBC and Radio Canada respectively, and both short-form names are also commonly used in the applicable language to refer to the corporation as a whole. Although some local stations in Canada predate CBC's founding, CBC is the oldest existing broadcasting network in Canada, first established in its present form on November 2, 1936. Radio services include CBC Radio 1, CBC Radio 2, ICI Radio Canada Premier E, ICI Music and the International Radio Service Radio Canada International. Television operations include CBC Television, ICI Radio Canada Tar Copyright La Copyright, CBC News Network, ICI RDI, ICI Explorer, ICI ARTV, and Documentary. The CBC operates services for the Canadian Arctic under the names CBC North and Radio Canada Nord. The CBC also operates digital services including CBC Car slash ICI Radio Canada Car, CBC Radio 3, CBC Music slash ICI Mu and ICI 2 TV, and owns 20.2% of satellite radio broadcaster Sirius XM Canada, which carries several CBC-produced audio channels. CBC Radio Canada offers programming in English, French and eight Aboriginal languages on its domestic radio service, and in five languages on its web-based international radio service, Radio Canada International. However, budget cuts in the early 2010s have contributed to the corporation reducing its service via the airwaves, discontinuing RCI's shortwave broadcasts as well as terrestrial television broadcasts in all communities served by network-owned rebroadcast transmitters, including communities not subject to Canada's over-the-air digital television transition. The financial structure and the nature of the CBC differs from other national broadcasters, such as the British broadcaster BBC, as the CBC employs commercial advertising to supplement its federal funding on its television broadcasts. The radio service employed commercials from its inception to 1974. Since then, its primary radio networks, like the BBC, have been commercial-free. However, since the fall of 2013, CBC's secondary radio networks Radio 2 and ICI Music have introduced limited advertising of up to four minutes an hour. History In 1929, the Aired Commission on Public Broadcasting recommended the creation of a national radio broadcast network. A major concern was the growing influence of American radio broadcasting as U.S.-based networks began to expand into Canada. Meanwhile, Canadian National Railways was making a radio network to keep its passengers entertained and give it an advantage over its rival, CP. This, the CNR Radio, is the forerunner of the CBC. Graham Spry and Alan Plaut lobbied intensely for the project on behalf of the Canadian Radio League. In 1932 the government of R.B. Bennett established the CBC's predecessor, the Canadian Radio Broadcasting Commission. The CRBC took over a network of radio stations formally set up by a federal crown corporation, the Canadian National Railway. The network was used to broadcast programming to riders aboard its passenger trains, with coverage primarily in central and eastern Canada. On November 2, 1936, the CRBC was reorganized under its present name. While the CRBC was a state-owned company, the CBC was a crown corporation on the model of the BBC. Leonard Brockington was the CBC's first chairman. For the next few decades, the CBC was responsible for all broadcasting innovation in Canada. This was in part because, until 1958, it was not only a broadcaster, but the chief regulator of Canadian broadcasting. It used this dual role to snap up most of the clear channel licenses in Canada. It began a separate French-language radio network in 1937. It introduced FM radio to Canada in 1946, though a distinct FM service wasn't launched until 1960. Television broadcasts from the CBC began on September 6, 1952, with the opening of a station in Montreal, Quebec, 
and a station in Toronto, Ontario opening two days later. The CBC's first privately owned affiliate television station, CKSO in Sudbury, Ontario, launched in October 1953. From 1944 to 1962, the CBC split its English-language radio network into two services known as the Trans-Canada Network and the Dominion Network. The latter, carrying lighter programs including American radio shows, was dissolved in 1962, while the former became known as CBC Radio. On July 1, 1958, CBC's television signal was extended from coast to coast. The first Canadian television show shot in colour was the CBC's own The Forest Rangers in 1963. However, colour television broadcasts did not begin until July 1, 1966, and full colour service began in 1974. In 1978, CBC became the first broadcaster in the world to use an orbiting satellite for television service, linking Canada from east to west to north. Equals Frontier Coverage Package equals Starting in 1967 and continuing until the mid-1970s, the CBC provided limited television service to remote and northern communities. Transmitters were built in a few locations and carried a four-hour selection of black-and-white videotaped programs each day. The tapes were flown into communities to be shown, then transported to other communities, often by the bicycle method used in television syndication. Transportation delays ranged from one week for larger centers to almost a month for small communities. The first FCP station was started in Yellowknife in 1967, the second in Whitehorse in 1968. Additional stations were added from 1969 to 1972. Most stations were fitted for the Annex satellite signal during 1973, carrying 12 hours of color programming. Broadcasts were geared to either the Atlantic Time Zone or the Pacific Time Zone even though the audience resided in communities in time zones varying from Utka 5 to Utka 8. Some of these stations used non-CBC call signs such as CFWHTV and Whitehorse, while some others used the standard CBT call sign. It would be many years before television programs originated in the North without the help of the South, starting with one half-hour per week in the 1980s with Focus North and graduating to a daily half-hour newscast, Northbeat, in the late 1990s. Equals CBC Television Slogans Equals, 1966, Television is CBC, 1970, When You Watch, Watch the Best, 1977, Bringing Canadians Together, 1980, We Are the CBC, 1984, Look to us for good things slash good to know, 1986 a euro 1989, the best on the box, 1989 a euro 1992, CBC and you, 1992 a euro 1994, go public slash CBC, public broadcasting, 1995 a euro 2001, television to call our own, and radio to call our own, 2001 a euro 2007, Canada Euro Unregistered Trademark S. Own, 2007 Euro 2014, Canada Lives Here, 2009 to present, Mon Mondes de Radio Canada, SRC, 2011, Yours to Celebrate, 2014 Euro Present, Love CBC slash Fall for CBC. Equals Logos Equals. The original logo of the CBC designed by a permail called Desbo Art student Hortense Burnett and used between 1940 and 1958, featured a map of Canada and a thunderbolt design used to symbolize broadcasting. In 1958, the CBC adopted a new logo for use at the end of network programs. Designed by scale model artist John Paul Boileau, it consisted of the legends CBC and Radio Canada overlaid on a map of Canada. For French programming, the Radio Canada was placed on top. The butterfly logo was designed for the CBC by Hubert Thiessen in 1966 to mark the network's progressing transition from black and white to color television, much in the manner of the NBC Peacock logo. It was used at the beginning of programs broadcast in color, and was used until all CBC television programs had successfully switched to color. A sketch on the CBC television program Wayne and Shuster once referred to this as the logo of the Cosmic Butterfly Corporation. The fourth logo, 
officially known internally as the GEM, was designed for the CBC by graphic artist Burton Kramer in December 1974, and it is the most widely recognized symbol of the corporation. The main on-air identification featured the logo kaleidoscopically morphing into its form while radiating outward from the center of the screen on a blue background. This animated version, which first went to air in December 1974, is also known as the Exploding Pizza. The appearance of this logo marked the arrival of full-color network television service. The large shape in the middle is the letter C, which stands for Canada, and the radiating parts of the C symbolize broadcasting. The original theme music for the 1974 CBC Island was a three-note woodwind orchestral fanfare accompanied by the voice over This is CBC, or ICI Radio Canada. This was later replaced by the more familiar 11-note synthesized jingle, which was used until December 31, 1985. The logo is also referred to simply as the CBC Pizza. The updated one-color version of the Gem Pizza logo created by Hubert Thiessen and Robert Innes, was introduced on January 1, 1986, and with it was introduced a new series of computer graphic-generated television idents for CBC and Radio Canada. These idents consisted of different background colors corresponding to the time of day behind a translucent CBC GEM logo, accompanied by different arrangements of the CBC's new, orchestrated five-note jingle. The logo was officially changed to one color, generally dark blue on white, or white on dark blue, in 1986. Print ads and most television promos, however, have always used a single color version of this logo since 1974. In 1992, CBC updated its logo design to make it simpler and more red. The new logo design, created by Swiss-Canadian design firm Gottschalk plus Ash, reduces the number of geometric sections in the logo to 13 instead of the previous logo's 25, and the C in the center of the logo became a simple red circle. According to graphic designer Todd Folkowski, the logo's red color also represents Canada in a symbolic way. With the launch of the current design, new television idents were introduced in November that year, also using CGI. Since the early 2000s, it has also appeared in white on a textured or colored background. It is now CBC Radio Canada's longest used logo, surpassing the original incarnation of the GEM logo in the CBC's 1940 logo. Equals nicknames equals, as the oldest currently operating Canadian broadcaster, and still the largest in terms of national availability of its various networks, the nickname Mother Corporation, and variants thereof are sometimes used in reference to the CBC. A popular satirical nickname for the CBC, commonly used in the pages of Frank, is the Corpse. There is an urban legend that a CBC announcer once referred to the network on the air as the Canadian Broad Corping Castration, which also sometimes remains in use as a satirical nickname. Quotations of the supposed Spoonerism are wildly variable in detail on what was said, when it was said or even who the announcer was, but there is no evidence to confirm the truth of the story. The only known recording of this phrase being spoken was created by American radio producer Kermit Schaefer for one of his best-selling Pardon My Blooper record albums in the 1950s, and is not in fact a real recording of a CBC broadcast. Some have referred to the CBC as the Corporate Broadcasting Corporation for an alleged free market bias, though the CBC is largely publicly funded. The CBC has also been mistakenly referred to as the Canadian Broadcasting Company. Corporation equals Mandate equals, the 1991 Broadcasting Act states that The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, as the national public broadcaster, should provide radio and television services incorporating a wide range of programming that informs, enlightens and entertains. The programming provided by the corporation should be predominantly and distinctively Canadian, reflect Canada and its regions to national and regional audiences, while serving the special needs of those regions, actively contribute to the flow and exchange of cultural expression, be in English and in French, reflecting the different needs and circumstances of each official language community, including the particular needs and circumstances of English and French linguistic minorities, strive to be of equivalent quality in English and French.
contribute to shared national consciousness and identity, be made available throughout Canada by the most appropriate and efficient means and as resources become available for the purpose, and, reflect the multicultural and multiracial nature of Canada. Equals management equals, as a crown corporation, the CBC operates at arm's length from the government in its day-to-day -day business. The corporation is governed by the Broadcasting Act of 1991, under a board of directors and is directly responsible to Parliament through the Department of Canadian Heritage. General management of the organization is in the hands of a president, who is appointed by the Governor-General of Canada in Council, on the advice of the Prime Minister. Board of Directors, in accordance with the Broadcasting Act, a board of directors is responsible for the management of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. The board is made up of 12 members, including the chair and the president and CEO. A current list of directors is available from the Canadian Governor in Council here. Presidents, 1936 a Euro 1939, Leonard Brockington, 1940 a Euro 1944, Rena Copyright Morin, 1944 a Euro 1945, Howard B. Chase, 1945 a Euro 1958, A. Davidson Dunton, 1958 a Euro 1967, J. Alfonso Wymet, 1968 a Euro 1972, George F. Davidson, 1972 a Euro 1975, Laurent A. Picard, 1975 a Euro 1982, A. W. Johnson, 1982 a Euro 1989, Pierre Junot, 1989. William T. Armstrong, 1989 a Euro 1994, Gar Copyright Rod Vila, 1994 a Euro 1995, Anthony S. Manra, 1995 a Euro 1999, Perrin Beatty, 1999 a Euro 2007, Robert Rabinovich, 2008 to present, Hubert T. Lacroix. Ombudsman, English, Esther Enkin, Kirk Lapointe, Vince Carlin, David Bazet, William Morgan, French, Pierre Torrangio, Julie Miville Decheny, Renaud Gilbert, Marcel Park Copyright Pin, Mario Cardinal, Bruno Goran. Equals Finance Equals, for the fiscal year 2006, the CBC received a total of $1.53 billion from all revenue sources, including government funding via taxpayers, subscription fees, advertising revenue, and other revenue. Expenditures for the year included $616 million for English television, $402 million for French television, $126 million for speciality channels, a total of $348 million for radio services in both languages, $88 million for management and technical costs, and $124 million for amortization of property and equipment. Some of this spending was derived from amortization of funding from previous years. Among its revenue sources for the year ending March 31, 2006, the CBC received $946 million in its annual funding from the federal government, as well as $60 million in one-time supplementary funding for programming. However, this supplementary funding has been repeated annually for a number of years. This combined total is just over a billion dollars annually and is a source of heated debate. To supplement this funding, the CBC's television networks and websites sell advertising, while cable satellite-only services such as CBC News Network additionally collect subscriber fees, in line with their privately owned counterparts. CBC's radio services do not sell advertising except when required by law. In September 2015, the Canadian Media Guild announced that the CBC planned to sell all of its properties across Canada to gain a temporary increase in available funds. Media relations manager Alexandra Fortier denied this and stated that the corporation planned to only sell half of its assets. CBC's funding differs from that of the public broadcasters of many European nations, which collect a license fee, or those in the United States, such as PBS and NPR which receive some public funding but rely to a large extent on voluntary contributions from individual viewers and listeners. A Nano's research poll from August 2014 conducted for Asper Media showed 41% of Canadians wanted funding increased, 46% wanted it maintained at current levels, and only 10% want to see it cut.
the network's defenders note that the CBC's mandate differs from private media's, particularly in its focus on Canadian content. That much of the public funding actually goes to the radio networks. And that the CBC is responsible for the full cost of most of its primetime programming, while private networks can fill up most of their primetime schedules with American series acquired for a fraction of their production cost. CBC supporters also point out that additional, long-term funding is required to provide better Canadian dramas and improved local programming to attract and sustain a strong viewership. Services equals News equals CBC News is the largest broadcast news gathering operation in Canada, providing services to CBC Radio as well as CBC News Network, local supper hour newscasts, CBC News Online, and Air Canada's in-flight entertainment. New CBC News services are also proving popular such as news alerts to mobile phones and PDAs. Desktop news alerts, email alerts, and digital television alerts are also available. Equals Radio Equals CBC Radio has five separate services, three in English, known as CBC Radio 1, CBC Radio 2 and CBC Radio 3, and two in French, known as Premier Recall or Registered Trademark Ni and Espace Musique. CBC Radio 1 and Premier Recall or Registered Trademark Ni focus on news and information programming, but they air some music programs, variety shows, comedy, and sports programming. Historically, CBC Radio 1 has broadcast primarily on the AM band, but many stations have moved over to FM. Over the years, a number of CBC Radio transmitters with a majority of them on the AM band have either moved to FM or had shut down completely. The CBC's original plan is to phase out more CBC AM transmitters across Canada. This goal however remains to be seen in light of the CBC budget cutbacks. Equals Long Range Radio Plan Equals The CBC's Long Range Radio Plan was developed by the Canadian Radio Television and Telecommunications Commission in collaboration with the CBC to identify those FM frequencies that would likely be required to deliver the CBC's radio services to the maximum number of Canadians. The CBC is currently not subject to any conditions or expectations concerning its LRRP. The CBC noted that Premier Recall or Registered Trademark NE and CBC Radio 1 were currently available to about 99% of the Canadian population. The CBC stated that it plans to maintain its current radio service but has no plans to grow the coverage area. It described the LRRP as a planning vehicle and indicated that it would no longer use it. Given reductions in public funding to the CBC and given that Premier Recall or Registered Trademark NE and Radio 1 are currently available to the vast majority of Canadians, the Commission considers that the CBC's plan to maintain current coverage and discontinue the LRRP is reasonable. Accordingly, the Commission accepts the CBC's proposal to discontinue the LRRP. Equals other CBC radio services equals CBC Radio 2 and a Space Musique found exclusively on FM, air arts and cultural programming, with a focus on music. CBC Radio 3, found only online and on satellite radio, airs exclusively independent Canadian music. CBC Radio also operated two shortwave services. 1. Radio Nordquay Copyright Beck, broadcast domestically to northern Quebec on a static frequency of 9625 kHz, and the other, Radio Canada International, provided broadcasts to the United States and around the world in eight languages. Both shortwave services were shut down in 2012 due to budget cuts. The Sackville transmitter site was dismantled in 2014. Additionally, the Radio 1 stations in St. John's and Vancouver operated shortwave relay transmitters, broadcasting at 6160 kHz. Some have suggested that CBC Radio Canada create a new high-power shortwave digital radio service for more effective coverage of isolated areas. In November 2004, the CBC, in partnership with Standard Broadcasting and Sirius Satellite Radio, applied to the Canadian Radio Television and Telecommunications Commission for a license to introduce satellite radio service to Canada. The CRTC approved the subscription radio application as well as two others for satellite radio service, 
on June 16, 2005. Sirius Canada launched on December 1, 2005, with a number of CBC radio channels, including the new services CBC Radio 3 and Band Apart. In some areas, especially national or provincial parks, the CBC also operates an AM or FM transmitter rebroadcasting weather alerts from the Meteorological Service of Canada's Weather Radio Canada service. Equals television equals. The CBC operates two national broadcast television networks. CBC Television in English, and ICI Radio Canada Tar Copyright La Copyright in French. Like private broadcasters, both those networks sell advertising but offer more Canadian-produced programming. Most CBC television stations, including those in the major cities, are owned and operated by the CBC itself and carry a common schedule, aside from local programming. Some stations that broadcast from smaller cities are private affiliates of the CBC, that is, stations which are owned by commercial broadcasters and air a predominantly CBC schedule. However, most affiliates of the English network opt out of some network programs to air local programming or more popular foreign programs acquired from other broadcasters. Private affiliates of the French network, all of which are located in Quebec, rarely have the means to provide alternate programming. Such private affiliates are becoming increasingly rare, and there have been indications that the CBC plans to discontinue all affiliation agreements with non CBC owned television stations in the 2010s. CBC television stations in Nunavut, the Northwest Territories and Yukon tailor their programming mostly to the local native population, and broadcast in many native languages, such as Inuktitut, Gwish One Quarter In, and Dean. One of the most popular shows is the weekly Saturday night broadcast of NHL hockey games. In English, the program is known as Hockey Night in Canada, and in French, it was called La Soire Copyright du Hockey. Both shows began in 1952. The French edition was discontinued in 2004, though Radio Canada stations outside of Quebec simulcast some Saturday night games produced by RDS until 2006. The network suffered considerable public embarrassment when it lost the rights to the show's theme music following a protracted lawsuit launched by the song's composer and publishers. In 2013, CBC lost the rights to telecast NHL games to Rogers Media owned Sportsnet. Although CBC continues to broadcast the NHL as a licensed broadcaster until 2018, all editorial content is currently produced by Rogers under a time brokerage agreement. Ratings for CBC television have declined in recent years. In Quebec, where the majority speaks French, La Ta Copyright La Copyright Vision de Radio Canada is popular and garners some of the highest ratings in the province. Both terrestrial networks have also begun to roll out high-definition television feeds, with selected NHL and CFL games produced in HD for the English network. After the digital switchover, CBC chose to use the 720p format on CBC and Radio Canada. The CBC also wholly owns and operates three speciality television channels a Euro CBC News Network, an English language news channel, a DI, a French language news channel, and Explorer, a Category B digital service. It owns a managing interest in the Francophone arts service ARTV, and of the digital channel, Documentary. Equals children's programming equals. Children's programming currently air under the commercial free preschool programming block called Kids CBC. Equals online equals. The CBC has two main websites. One is in English, at CBC Car, which was established in 1996. The other is in French. The website allows the CBC to produce sections which complement the various programs on television and radio. In 2012, the corporation launched CBC Music, a digital music service which produces and distributes 40 music-related web streams, including the existing audio streams of both CBC Radio 2 and CBC Radio 3. In 2012, the CBC announced its plans for a new local news service in Hamilton, Ontario. With the Hamilton area already within the broadcast range of CBC Radio and CBC Television services in Toronto, 
it was not financially or technically feasible for the public broadcaster to launch new conventional radio or television stations in Hamilton. Accordingly, the corporation has developed a new model, with Hamilton as its test project, to launch a local digital service that would be accessible on the Internet and telecommunications devices such as tablets and smartphones. The project launched in May 2012. Equals merchandising equals, established in 2002, the CBC Radio Canada merchandising business operates retail locations and CBC SHOP car, its educational sales department CBC Learning sells CBC content and media to educational institutions, CBC merchandising also licenses brands such as Hockey Night in Canada and Coronation Street. Equals interactive television equals, CBC provides viewers with interactive on-demand television programs every year through digital cable services like Rogers Cable. Equals commercial services equals, CBC Records is a Canadian record label which distributes CBC programming, including live concert performances and album transcripts of news and information programming such as the Massey Lectures, in album format. Music albums on the label predominantly in the classical and jazz genres, are distributed across Canada in commercial record stores, while albums containing spoken word programming are predominantly distributed by the CBC's own retail merchandising operations. Equals miscellaneous equals, CBC provides news, business, weather and sports information on Air Canada's in-flight entertainment as in route journal. Unions Unions representing employees at CBC Radio Canada include, Canadian Media Guild represents on-air, production, technical, administrative and support staff outside of Quay Copyright Beck and Moncton. Association of Professionals and Supervisors, American Federation of Musicians of the United States and Canada, Alliance of Canadian Cinema, Television and Radio Artists, International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, Writers Guild of Canada, Association des Rares Copyright Alicatas, Syndicate des Communications de Radio Canada, Socia Copyright Tar Copyright des Auteurs de la Radio, de la Tar Copyright La Copyright Vision et du Signe Copyright Ma. Syndicate Canadien de la Fonction Publique, Conceal des Sections Locales, Group des Employer Copyright, E. S. de Bureau et Professionnel, La, S. Socia Copyright Tar Copyright Professional des Auteurs Composites du Quai Copyright Beck, Syndicate des Technicien, Ni, S.A. des Artisan, E. S. du Ra Copyright Sophrena Section A's. Union des Artistes. Equals Labor Issues Equals, During the summer of 1981 there was a major disruption of CBC programming as the Technicians Union, NABET, went on strike. Local newscasts were cut back to the bare minimum. This had the effect of delaying the debut of the journal, which had to wait until January 1982. On August 15, 2005, 5,500 employees of the CBC were locked out by CBC CEO Robert Rabinovich in a dispute over future hiring practices. At issue were the rules governing the hiring of contract workers in preference to full-time hires. The locked-out employees were members of the Canadian Media Guild, representing all production, journalistic and on-air personnel outside Quebec and Moncton, including several foreign correspondents. While CBC services continued during the lockout, they were primarily made up of repeats, with news programming from the BBC and Newswires. Major CBC programmes such as the National and Royal Canadian Air Force were not produced during the lockout. Some non-CBC owned programs seen on the network, such as the Red Green Show, shifted to other studios. Meanwhile, the locked out employees produced podcasts and websites such as cocoonplug.com. After a hiatus, talks reopened. On September 23, the Federal Minister of Labor called Robert Rabinovich and Arnold Amber to his office for talks aimed at ending the dispute. Late in the evening of October 2, 2005, it was announced that the CBC management and staff had reached a tentative deal which resulted in the CBC returning to normal operations on October 11. Some speculated that the looming October 8 start date for the network's most important television property, Hockey Night in Canada, 
had acted as an additional incentive to resolve the dispute. The CBC has been affected by a number of other labor disputes since the late 1990s. In early 1999, CBC English and French network technicians in all locations outside Quebec and Moncton, members of the Communications, Energy and Paper Workers Union of Canada, went on strike. The Canadian Media Guild was set to strike as well, but the CBC settled with both unions. A similar dispute, again involving all technicians outside Quebec and Moncton, occurred in late 2001 and concluded by the end of the year. In spring 2002, on-air staff in Quebec and Moncton were locked out by local management, leaving, among other things, NHL playoff games without commentary on French television. While all labor disputes resulted in cutback programming and numerous repeat airings, the 2005 lockout may have been the most damaging to CBC. All local programming in the affected regions was cancelled and replaced by abbreviated national newscasts and national radio morning shows. BBC World and World Service and broadcast news feeds were used to provide the remainder of original news content, and the CBC website consisted mainly of rewritten wire copy. Some BBC staff protested against their material being used during the CBC lockout. The NUJ and BECTU will not tolerate their members' work being used against colleagues in Canada, said a joint statement by BBC unions. The CMG questioned whether, with its limited Canadian news content, the CBC was meeting its legal requirements under the Broadcasting Act and its CRTC licenses. Galaxy supplied some music content for the radio networks. Tapes of previously aired or produced documentaries, interviews and entertainment programs were also aired widely. Selected television sports coverage, including that of the Canadian Football League, continued, but without commentary. As before, French language staff outside of Quebec were also affected by the 2005 lockout, although with Quebec producing the bulk of the French network's programming, those networks were not as visibly affected by the dispute apart from local programs. Cultural significance The 1950s saw the CBC providing hands on training and employment for actors, writers, and directors in the developing field of its television dramatic services and later saw much of the talent heading south to seek fame and fortune in New York and Hollywood. The CBC was the only television network broadcasting in Canada until the creation of ITO, a short-lived predecessor of today's CTV, in 1960. Even then, large parts of Canada did not receive CTV service until the late 1960s or early 1970s. The CBC also had the only national radio network. Its cultural impact was therefore significant since many Canadians had little or no choice for their information and entertainment other than from these two powerful media outlets. Even after the introduction of commercial television and radio, the CBC has remained one of the main elements in Canadian popular culture through its obligation to produce Canadian television and radio programming. The CBC has made programs for mass audiences and for smaller audiences interested in drama performance arts, documentaries, current affairs, entertainment and sport. The CBC's cultural influence, like that of many public broadcasters, has decreased in recent decades. This is partly due to severe budget cuts by the Canadian federal government, which began in the late 1980s and leveled off in the late 1990s. It is also due to industry-wide fragmentation of television audiences. Private networks in Canada face the same competition, but their viewership is declining more slowly than CBC televisions. In English-speaking Canada, the decline in CBC viewership can be partly attributed to popularity of private television networks rebroadcast of American programming with substituted Canadian advertising. American programs appear to attract higher audiences than do much of the made-in-Canada programming that is a CBC speciality. Viewership on the CBC's French television network has also declined, mostly because of stiff competition from private French-language networks. Audience fragmentation is another issue. However, in contrast to the Anglophone audience, French Canadians prefer homegrown television programming, a vibrant Quebec star system is in place, and little American or foreign content airs on French-language networks, public or private. 
and the CBC's French language radio channel is sometimes the top rated network. In the case of breaking news, including federal elections, CBC television may obtain the largest number of viewers. For instance, after election night 2006, CBC television took out full page newspaper ads claiming the 2.2 million Canadians watched their coverage more than any other broadcaster. However, in similar ads, CTV also claimed to be number one, stating there was a CBC audience of only 1.2 million. In both cases, the methodologies were not clear from the ads, such as time periods and whether simulcasts on one or both of the network's news channels were counted. Competition from private broadcasters like CTV, Global, and other broadcast television stations and speciality channels has lessened the CBC's reach, but nevertheless it remains a major influence on Canadian popular culture. According to the corporation's research, 92% of Canadians consider the CBC an essential service. International broadcasts. Equals News World International and Trio equals, from 1994 to 2000, the CBC, in a venture with Power Broadcasting, jointly owned two networks, News World International, an American cable channel that rebroadcast much of the programming of CBC News World. Trio, an arts and entertainment channel. In 2000, CBC and Power Broadcasting sold these channels to Barry Diller's USA Networks. Diller's company was later acquired by Vivendi Universal, which in turn was partially acquired by NBC to form NBC Universal. NBC Universal still owns the Trio brand, which no longer has any association with the CBC. The channel was shut down and was replaced with the NBC Universal Channel Sleuth, which later became Clue. However, the CBC continued to program NWI, with much of its programming simulcast on the domestic News World service. In late 2004, as a result of a further change in NWI's ownership to the INDTV consortium, NWI ceased airing CBC programming on August 1, 2005, when it became Current TV. Current later folded and became Al Jazeera America on August 20, 2013 equals U.S. border audiences equals, in U.S. border communities such as Bellingham, Seattle, Buffalo, Detroit and Burlington, CBC radio and television stations can be received over the air and have a significant audience. Further from the border, some American fans of the network have acquired Canadian IP addresses to stream its sports broadcasts. Some CBC programming is also rebroadcast on local public radio such as New Hampshire Public Radio, Vermont Public Radio and the main public broadcasting network. CBC television channels are available on cable systems located near the Canadian border. For example, CBET Windsor is available on cable systems in the Detroit, Michigan, and Toledo, Ohio, areas. Much of the rest of the state of Michigan receives CBMT Montreal on cable. CBUT is broadcast on Comcast in the Seattle, Washington, area. At night, the AM radio transmissions of both CBC and SRC services can be received over much of the northern portion of the United States, from stations such as CBW in Winnipeg and CBK in Saskatchewan. Equals carriage of CBC News equals, on September 11, 2001, several American broadcasters without their own news operations, including C-SPAN, carried the CBC's coverage of the September 11, 2001, attacks in New York City and Washington, D.C. In the days after September 11, C-SPAN carried CBC's nightly newscast, The National, anchored by Peter Mansbridge. The quality of this coverage was recognized specifically by the Canadian Journalism Foundation. Editor-in-Chief Tony Berman later accepted the Excellence in Journalism Award for rigorous professional practice, accuracy, originality and public accountability, on behalf of the service. C-SPAN has also carried CBC's coverage of major events affecting Canadians, including, Canadian federal elections, key proceedings in Canadian Parliament, six days in September 2000 that marked the death and state funeral of Pierre Elliott Trudeau, the power outage crisis in summer 2003, U.S. presidential elections state visits and official visits of American presidents to Canada, 
and Barack Obama inauguration in 2009. Several PBS stations also air some CBC programming. However, these programs are syndicated by independent distributors, and are not governed by the PBS common carriage policy. Other American broadcast networks sometimes air CBC reports, especially for Canadian events of international significance. For example, in the early hours after the Swiss Air Flight 111 disaster, CNN aired CBC's live coverage of the event. Also in the late 1990s, CNN Headline News aired a few CBC reports of events that were not significant outside Canada. Equals CBC Radio equals some CBC Radio 1 programs, such as Definitely Not the Opera, Wiretap, Q, and As It Happens, also air on some stations associated with American Public Media or Public Radio International. With the launch of Sirius Canada in December 2005, some of the CBC's radio networks are available to Sirius subscribers in the United States. Equals Caribbean and Bermuda equals Several Caribbean nations carry feeds of CBC TV, Bahamas, on the Coral Wave television system in the Northern Bahamas. Barbados, on the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation multi choice TV cable system, and, on the Columbus Communications owned cable system Flow Barbados. Bermuda, on the Cable Vision Digital Cable Service. Grenada, carried on Columbus Communications owned cable system Flow Grenada. Jamaica, distributed in areas served by Flow Jamaica. Trinidad and Tobago, on the Columbus Communications Trinidad Limited Television System. Equals availability of CBC channels and programming equals, the CBC Channel, Radio Canada, CBC Newsworld and all other CBC channels can be received through cable and satellite TV channel providers across Canada, like through Bell Express Vo Rogers Cable, Videotron, Kajeko, and other smaller TV providers. The CBC and SRC channel signals can also be obtained free of charge, over the air, through antenna receivers in portions of Canada or in border states along the Canada-US border. However CBC is not obtainable as a free-to-air channel on FTA satellites. Controversies equals Allegations of liberal bias equals, In 2009, CBC President Hubert Lacroix commissioned a study to determine whether its news was biased, and if so, to what extent. He said, Our job a euro, and we take it seriously a euro is to ensure that the information that we put out is fair and unbiased in everything that we do. The study, the methodology of which was not specified, was due to report results in the fall of 2010. In April 2010, the Conservatives accused pollster Frank Graves of giving partisan advice to the Liberal Party of Canada, noting his donations to the party since 2003. Graves directed a number of public opinion research projects on behalf of the CBC as well as other media organizations, and also appeared on a number of CBC television programs relating to politics. An investigation conducted by the CBC Ombudsman found no evidence to support these allegations, stating that personal donor history is not relevant to one's objectivity as a pollster. In March 2011, the Toronto Sun accused Vote Compass an online voter engagement application developed by political scientists and launched by CBC during the 2011 federal election campaign, of a liberal bias. The accusation centered on the observation that one could provide identical responses to each proposition in Vote Compass and would in each case be positioned closest to the Liberal Party in the results. This claim was directly addressed by Vote Compass representatives who noted that the propositions in the application are specifically constructed in such a way as to avoid acquiescence bias and that the result described by the Toronto Sun was arrived at by gaming the system. Vote Compass also released analyses of the data it gathered from the federal election, which have further negated efforts to discredit it. It is widely speculated that suspicions of bias were fueled by Sun Media in an effort to promote its anti-CBC agenda and the concurrent launch of its cable news channel. The criticism appears to have been isolated to the 2011 Canadian federal election edition of Vote Compass and has not re-emerged in any subsequent editions of Vote Compass either in Canada or internationally. Equals closed captioning equals, 
CBC Television was an early leader in broadcasting programming with closed captioning for the hearing impaired, airing its first caption programming in 1981. Caption programming in Canada began with the airing of Clown White in English language and French language versions on CBC Television and Radio Canada, respectively. Most sources list that event as occurring in 1981, while others list the year as 1982. In 1997, Henry Vlug, a deaf lawyer in Vancouver, filed a complaint with the Canadian Human Rights Commission alleging that an absence of captioning on some programming on CBC television in Newsworld infringed on his rights as a person with a disability. A ruling in 2000 by the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal, which later heard the case, sided with Vlug and found that an absence of captioning constituted discrimination on the basis of disability. The tribunal ordered CBC Television and Newsworld to caption the entirety of their broadcast days, including television shows, commercials, promos and unscheduled news flashes, from sign-on until sign-off. The ruling recognized that there will inevitably be glitches with respect to the delivery of captioning, but that the rule should be full captioning. In a negotiated settlement to avoid appealing the ruling to the Federal Court of Canada, CBC agreed to commence 100% captioning on CBC Television and News World beginning November 1, 2002. CBC Television and News World are apparently the only broadcasters in the world required to caption the entire broadcast day. However, published evidence asserts that CBC is not providing the 100% captioning ordered by the tribunal. In 2004, retired Canadian Senator Jean Robert Gautier a hard-of-hearing person, filed a complaint with the Canadian Human Rights Commission against Radio Canada concerning captioning, particularly the absence of real-time captioning on newscasts and other live programming. As part of the settlement process, Radio Canada agreed to submit a report on the state of captioning, especially real-time captioning, on Radio Canada and ADI. The report, which was the subject of some criticism, proposed an arrangement with CETA Copyright Colla Copyright GL, a college in Ottawa, to train more French-language real-time captioners. English-language speciality networks owned or co-owned by CBC, including Documentary, have the lower captioning requirements typical of larger Canadian broadcasters. ARTV, the French-language speciality network co-owned by CBC, has a maximum captioning requirement of 53%. Equals beyond the red wall equals, in November 2007, the CBC replaced their documentary Beyond the Red Wall, Persecution of Falun Gong, about persecution of Falun Gong members in China, at the last minute with a rerun episode regarding President Pervez Musharraf in Pakistan. Originally, the broadcaster had said to the press that the crisis in Pakistan was considered more urgent and much more newsworthy but sources from within the network itself had stated that the Chinese government had called the Canadian embassy and demanded repeatedly that the program be taken off the air. The documentary in question was to air on Tuesday, November 6, 2007 on CBC News World, but was replaced. The documentary aired two weeks later on November 20, 2007, after editing. Equals Radio Canada rebranding equals, on June 5, 2013. CBC announced that it would be phasing out the Radio Canada brand as a viewer-facing brand for its French-language networks, and unifying all of its French-language properties under names prefixed with ICI. For instance, CBC planned to rebrand TAR Copyright La Copyright Vision de Radio Canada as ICI TAR Copyright La Copyright, Premier Re Corps Registered Trademark NE as ICI Premier Re and move its French language website from Radio Canada Car to ICI Car. Radio Canada Vice President Louis Lalin stated that the new name complemented its multi-platform operations, while also serving as an homage to the broadcaster's historic station identification slogan ICI Radio Canada. The decision was met with controversy from critics and politicians, who felt that the new ICI brand was too confusing and that the CBC was diminishing the value of the Radio Canada name through its plans to downplay it. The rebranding was also criticized for being unnecessary spending, reportedly costing $400,000, in the midst of budget cuts at the CBC. On June 10, in response to the criticism, 
Hubert Lacroix formally apologized for the decision and announced that the new brands for its main radio and television networks would be revised to restore the Radio Canada name alongside ICI, such as ICI Radio Canada Premier E. The CBC also filed a trademark lawsuit against Sam Norousey, founder of CFHDDT, a new multicultural station in Montreal, seeking to have his own registration on the name ICI cancelled because it was too similar to its own ICI-related trademarks. Despite Norousey's ICI trademark having been registered prior to the registration of CBC's own ICI trademarks, the corporation argued that Norousey's application contained incorrect information surrounding his first use of the name in commerce, and also asserted the long-time use of ICI Radio Canada as part of its imaging. Narousey stated that he planned to fight the CBC in court. Over the air digital television transition, the CRTC ordered that in 28 mandatory markets, full power over the air analog television transmitters had to cease transmitting by August 31, 2011. Broadcasters could either continue serving those markets by transitioning analog transmitters to digital or cease broadcasting over the air. Cable, IPTV, and satellite services are not involved or affected by this digital transition deadline. While its fellow Canadian broadcasters converted most of their transmitters to digital by the Canadian digital television transition deadline of August 31, 2011, CBC converted only about half of the analog transmitters in mandatory to digital. Due to financial difficulties reported by the corporation, the corporation published a plan whereby communities that receive analog signals by rebroadcast transmitters in mandatory markets would lose their over-the-air signals as of the deadline. Rebroadcast transmitters account for 23 of the 48 CBC and SRC transmitters in mandatory markets. Mandatory markets losing both CBC and SRC over-the-air signals include London, Ontario and Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. In both of those markets, the corporation's television transmitters are the only ones that were not converted to digital. On July 31, 2012, CBC shut down all of its approximately 620 analog television transmitters, following an announcement of these plans on April 4, 2012. This reduced the total number of the corporation's television transmitters across the country to 27. According to the CBC, this would reduce the corporation's yearly costs by $10 million. No plans have been announced to use sub-channels to maintain over-the-air signals for both CBC and SRC in markets where the corporation has one digital transmitter. In fact, in its CRTC application to shut down all of its analog television transmitters, the CBC communicated its opposition to use of sub-channels, citing, amongst other reasons, costs. CBCRC claims that few Canadians actually lost access to CBC and Radio Canada programming due to the very high penetration of cable and satellite, which in some areas is all but essential for acceptable television. Personalities Notable CBC alumni have included television and radio personalities, former Governors General of Canada Jean Sauver Copyright, Adriana Clarkson, and Michael Legine as well as former Quebec Premier Rena Copyright La Copyright Fisk. See also BBC, Canadian Radio Broadcasting Commission, CBC Museum, Concentration of Media Ownership, Media in Canada, Public Francophone Radios, Radio Television Hong Kong, Ra Copyright Soda Information, 2TV, Ontario. Notes and References Further reading, Alan, Jean and Daniel J. Robinson, eds. Communicating in Canada's Past, Essays in Media History, Graham, Sean. A Canadian Network? The CBC and Television, 1936 a Euro 1939. Historical Journal of Film, Radio and Television pp. 1-19. Ma Copyright Nard, Marion. CBC Radio Canada, Overview and Key Issues Online. 11 pages, Murray, Gill Nothing On But The Radio, A Look Back At Radio In Canada And How It Changed The World. Popular History, Piers, Frank W. The Politics Of Canadian Broadcasting, 1920-1951, Taras, David. Digital Mosaic, Media, Power, 
and Identity in Canada, Tier Tomazali, Ruth. Empire and Broadcasting in the Interwar Years, Towards a Consideration of Public Broadcasting in the British Dominions. Critical Arts 29 No. 1 pp. 77-93. Weir, Ernest Austin. The Struggle for National Broadcasting in Canada. Equals Primary Sources Equals, Bird, Roger, Ed Documents of Canadian Broadcasting. MQUP. Equals in French Equals, Bergeron, Raymond, and Marcel Aouet. Boix, Visages et Legends, Radio Canada 1936-1986. Montre Copyright Al, Quay Copyright Enterprises Radio Canada, 1986. NB The subtitle appears on front cover. 256p, L with B and W ports. ISBN 0-88794-328-4, Whitmer, Glenn Edward, and Jack Traput, eds. 50, that is Sanguantians de Radio, Radio Canada, 1936-1986. Montre Copyright Al, Quay Copyright Enterprises Radio Canada. 1986. 47p, Ampliel, chiefly with B&W photos. External links, official website, archival papers held at University of Toronto Archives and Records Management Services.